is up, guys? It is the one, the only, the Napa YT slash Sane Elite, whatever you want to call me. I go by many titles. How are you all doing? Welcome to the second episode of the Sayacast. That's right, and I am so excited. First, we had the one and only Sloot, uh, Rose Goku Black, also known as Koi. And now we have an equally awesome and special guest, Mr. Abridged Goku. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing quite fine. Thank you so much for having me here. Also, Rosé is called the Sloot, and everybody else calls me the Manho, so take it for what you will. <laughs> well, I mean, those are equally honoring and, and, and lovely titles. Um, first off, I, I need to say thank you so much for being here. This is so awesome. Um, you know, I've been trying to get some guests for the Saycast, and you were very willing to come on and just kind of show us the person behind the Goku voice, and I'm super excited. So, um, should we just dive into it, or what? Yeah, let's just dive into it. First of all, actually, I'm a big fan of yours, so yeah, it's, it was, um, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Oh, well, you know what? That just, uh, 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 gets me right in the heart. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, that is, that is, that is a real honor coming from you. I mean, you, you know what? We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it, because I want to talk about you as a YouTuber, you as a person, the awesome growth you've had, the struggles you've gone through, it, we're, we're going to cover all of it. So, first question, Mr. Abridged Goku, when did you start voice acting? When did I start voice acting? Well, if I can break character, if you don't mind. Of course, of course. Well, um, when I started voice acting, originally, I'd say close to five years ago, mm -hmm. um, I had been just doing lots of impressions. I watched a lot of cartoons as a kid, and I just got so obsessed with the idea of mimicking these characters. You ever know how you're a kid and you love to role play as a kid? Right. No, definitely. Did that all the time as a kid. I would do a lot of that from The Kids Next Door, Dragon Ball Z, Avatar The Last Airbender, you name it. And voice acting just came naturally to me. I just had a natural, you know, charismatic personality. Right, right. So so it was something that kind of, uh, it, it was easy for you to come into. Yeah, it, it just fit my personality, even though in reality I was a shy person. Right, right. Well, I, I, it seems like a lot of voice actors are. You know, you meet, you, you see these, uh, these big voice actors at, at cons, and they're actually quite shy and quite humble and, you know, quite um, soft-spoken, which I always thought was something so cool. You know, they play these big, huge characters with these awesome voices, and in reality they're just kind of quiet people. Me, as a, you know, as somebody who has been very shy, I would, I guess it would depend on the right person. If I feel I have good chemistry with somebody, I can let my, you know, geekiness come out more, depending right. on that person. Right, no, but, no, definitely. But as for voice acting, yeah, five years ago, I just said, you know, I, I can do a bit more of this. So I started going on Cast Call Club and uh, some other sites uh, a few years down the road. My mm -hmm. first voice acting experience was uh i want to say i did it, and i can say it was a fan thing it wasn't really nothing professional it was doing some auto re auto recordings with a friend of mine for his uh show he was putting on a show in, in his friend's backyard and he was good at editing and i played uh goku that was my first time doing the abridged goku voice Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, you sound just like Masako X. And I was like, well, who's Masako X? He plays <laughs> Goku. I said, I said, Sean Schemmel's Goku. That's uh, so awesome. That's so and awesome. That, and when he when he showed me the video, I'm like, what the hell is this? I did. I, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like. I did not like uh, Team Four Star when I first saw that their mm -hmm. first video. Like, yeah, I mean, I thought the first episodes were super cringy, but I mean, it, it's something that grows on you. It grew on me when I hit the Freezer Saga. Well, really, Napa mm -hmm. was like, you know, the Napa stuff was really, I thought was good in the first season. But right. the Freezer Saga is where it really kicked off for me, and I really started to, to vibe. And Same. I thought they got their groove. Same. Um, so I did that, and um, just, I did more acting, if anything. Like, I, I do singing on the side. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've heard you I, sing, and you are quite the singer, sir. I, and I'm, and I'm saying this from my own bubble. I don't think I'm that good. I think I'm okay. I, I think uh, I think you're very good, and I think your fans would agree. I mean, you've done a lot of covers, and you've done a lot of interesting stuff. And, I mean, I, I, I've never heard you sing badly, and I've, and I've listened to you sing quite a bit. I appreciate that, but I think, uh, as a singer, I think we're the most hardest on ourselves when, we come to, when it comes to singing in general. True, um, true. 
as far as what, when YouTube came out, I, I've been a fan of YouTube since it first came out, but, mm-hmm. but I've never done anything. I was always one of those guys that would, you know, be in the comments and comment my opinions and, you know, just a regular fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like I said, one of my biggest inspirations on YouTube was Dash XP. Just loved his energy. Mm-hmm. That that big charismatic energy, which he still does to this very day. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers I really, really enjoy, but he's one of those guys that I really saw back in 2011 and just stuck with them for these last seven years. Right, right. Well, that, oh man, that's seven years ago now. That's crazy. Yeah, I was a teenager back then. Oh my goodness. So, so that's a good segue to our next question, which is, so you decided to start a channel, you know, you're taking that big step. Um, why did you choose to brand yourself as abridged Goku? Because, you know, when everybody makes these channels, they need to decide what is their personality going to be? What character are they going to try to emulate? Um, why did you Why did you pick the character you did? It's a great question, which I want, I was going to segue into, actually. Um, my original channel um, was originally given to me by my friend, who I'll just call Moose because that was his nickname. Um, he had a channel called Twins of Sanity. This was back in 2010. Mm-hmm. And he really didn't know what to do. He did some videos, you know, live action videos and they were okay, I guess, for the time. Cringy now, but they were okay right. for the time. And he's like, you know, dude, you can just have my account. Twins of Sanity is an alias for uh, Twins of Sanity, of Sanity from the Crash Bandicoot games. Right. Um, so I just took that, didn't know what to do with it. I saw these YouTubers, and I was like, ah, I don't want to do it. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm so camera shy. Um, but after a few years of just, like, missing my opportunity, I was seeing all these guys just doing crazy things. Like, I can do that. Or I saw people who were who I thought, you know, if they can do it, then I can do it too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, after 2017, I said, I'm going to do this. Originally, I started doing Star Wars stuff. I would do Star Wars, comic dubs. I even got a big part as uh, Lord Darth Vader on Xylophony's uh, channel, which is still there. Mm. Uh, he still has me pegged as Lord S- as Twins of Sanity. You, <laughs> so you, you should there. send me a link to that. I'd love to hear your Darth Vader. It's it's in my um it's in my collabs. I have oh, really? every collabs I've done is in my collab feature. I just added that. Dang. Yeah. I'll have to look at that. So I did that for like a year, but I wasn't really my subscriber count wasn't growing. I didn't I didn't know what I was doing wrong, you know? I, I just work with a guy who has two hundred some subs. I like I thought I was doing pretty good for myself. Mm-hmm. But after a while I then I then I saw this YouTuber. I saw this YouTuber, uh she had no subscribers, but she was funny. And that turned out to be Lily, who was the Majin, um, Android Twenty One's channel. Yes, yes. I instantly fell in love with her voice. I just and she responded, and she was one of the first like YouTubers to really have a back and forth with me. Mm-hmm. And I was a very first subscriber. I joined her Discord, met Bardock and a few other people who I was happy to call my friends. We started joking around and playing around with Team Four Star because by this time I was a big Team Four Star fan, which was this was just last year. Right. No, no, I wouldn't say last year, early this year, really. Okay. Um, and I kept doing a, like, lots of uh, Bridge Goku voices, and it's like, dude, dude, you sound so good. I'm like, well, thank you. And I would joke around with other voices. And I said, you know what, um, maybe I should join the Dra- DBZ community, because they kept egging me on a join, and I was a, I'm was, i such a big Dragon Ball fan, but I'm doing the Star Wars stuff. I'm doing comic dubs. I wanted to dub the whole vader comic series i was editing it but it was so exhausting and stressful having to yeah editing process i have such respect for anybody who edits yeah Um, yeah it's a it when you watch those videos you don't take it into account because i've watched a lot of those star wars comic dubs because i love them i love listening to them um but yeah that editing is it, it looks simple but it's really not like so much so I got I got you know I did good because even Crate Dragon Films who does who I think are some of the best ones who does it they complimented me they wanted to work with me and then there was a uh, movie voiceover dubs who also complimented me and I thought I was doing pretty well but in the back of my mind I was like maybe I should switch genres I, I'm always gonna be a Star Wars fan but Dragon Ball if I had to choose between the two I'm I ooh that's a that's a tough one but I am gonna pick Dragon Ball because that was my first ever anime I ever watched it's still my favorite anime of all time. And if I have an opportunity, I'm going to jump in there. So I rebranded and changed it to a bridge Goku. Okay. So was that – jumping into my next question, was that overwhelming at first? Because, I mean, you go in, you watch people, you, you watch the bigger character channels, and you go, oh, that can't be that hard. But then you find out, 
okay, you need you need a good mic, you need editing software, you need you know you need to edit, you need um, you know background, you need to know how to do these these videos. Um, was that overwhelming for you at first? Because I mean, you want that level of quality, um, but it can be kind of daunting when you first get into it and you don't really know all that much about what you're going into. Me, as someone who had been watching reaction channels since it first came out, I knew that, you know, everything you were saying, I had all that in some. That was part of the big reason why I didn't make that jump for those four years. Um, I just, like, you have to, everything you just said, my quality, wanting to sound good. But what really changed my mind was that year before, and I, when, I had, when I had sung live in front of an audience, a TV audience, that something I thought I'd never do. And we were live mm -hmm. on television and I got to sing and a kid walked up to me and he said, can I have your autograph? <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. And, that's so cool. And I thought like, okay, if I had the balls to go on live and national TV and just sing, what, what can really, what would YouTube do? Like, I'm, I'm behind the, I'm behind, I'm a guy behind the computer screen mm -hmm. and people saw my face and they said, you know, this kid's not bad. So that really uh, gave me my confidence boost. I said, you know what, if you know, I may not have the right mic quality and all this stuff, but if my personality is good enough, I think people will, you know, they'll say, you know, he's good enough to stay. He doesn't have the best quality, but I like what he does. Right. And I'll stay subscribed to him. Hopefully. Right. No, I, I, I completely get that because, you know, nobody's, nobody gets it perfect their first video. You know, I, I'm so glad that my first videos are, are deleted forever and gone into the ether because, oh my goodness, they're awful. <laughs> they're so bad. Um, when I first started, actually, you know, and this was, this was, I took this as the world's biggest compliment and insult because there was a fan. I'm assuming he was a Team Four Star fan. Mm -hmm. Now, this has been, I think I've told the story to a lot of my friends. He would, he basically insulted my channel like I was the Moscow X but he did it in the way that made him believe I was Moscow X and he said if he didn't then dude you are a great voice actor and I was just taken back like um I'm I'm confused I would have at the same time <laughs> I would have no idea how to react to that so he thought you were Masako so he insulted you like you were Masako but then he said if you're not Masako you're awesome he said you, you you did a damn good voice impression, basically, because <laughs> I I guess he accused Moscow of selling out with Team Four Star for working with Fun um, Funimation or whatever. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know the story. I didn't want to, but I was like, okay then. I, and I said, if if I can convince this guy, who I don't like, hmm. beef with people, I don't know. Um, I can do this. Uh, in uh, bad mic and all, and I was using my desktop mic. Believe it or not. Oh, wow. Lord. Oh yeah, man, that's not like oh, that's... Dude, having to deal with that background quality. All that yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I but feel believe it or not, believe it or not, people ya. started watching though. I started doing reaction, and honestly, me about the reaction community, I just love doing reactions. But my thing about reactions, if you're gonna do it, you have to really be into it. I'm not gonna watch somebody who has no interest, and you're just looking at the screen. If you have no real interest in showing emotion and expression in what you're doing, then that's just, there's no fun in it. Just like when you know how you show your friends, because reaction videos to me are like, hey, buddy, I want you to see this. You want to see right. that expression of your friend to this video. Or like if you're getting somebody into an anime, you want to know their reaction. You want to know how they feel about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what I felt I could do, because I always go crazy over whatever I react to if I'm really into it. And mm -hmm. I would never react to something if I'm not into it, because I feel like, it's fake. I don't want to give a fake reaction. Mm -hmm. No, for me, and reactions have to be something that, like, you add something new to what. Because I see, I see so many reaction channels. Not, not really in the in the Dragon Ball community, but it's just some, it's just some person watching a video. You know, the video is going in the corner, and you just hear, oh, oh, ooh, ah, look at that. And for me, that's just, uh, it just, it just, it doesn't feel genuine, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I totally agree. So, okay, m moving on to the next question. Um, so, I mean, you've experienced some major success and I mean major, and, and I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, puff you up or like, you know, bow down to you. I'm just stating the facts. I mean, you, you, 
you, you just reached over not uh, over nine thousand uh, subs, uh, which is crazy, and and it's so you know much more than what you previously had, which we'll talk about that you know later. Mm-hmm. Did you expect to be this successful? When I came in, you know, into YouTube, I felt like I had a goal in mind. My goal was to reach a thousand subs. Like if I said if I can reach a thousand subs, I can do this because that's when. You know, YouTube was going off and saying, you know, you have to have a thousand hours of watch time, I'm mean, four thousand hours of watch time, a thousand subs, which didn't bother me at the time. I was like at two, three hundred and twenty six subs, and mm-hmm. I was just enjoying what I was doing. But that's that's and that, I mean, I wasn't doing anything at that time really when that happened. Um, and I just said, you know what, just go in. If you can get a thousand subs, then you stay, you stick with it. And if you can't, then maybe YouTube just isn't for you. For me, I. I learned. I learned. I watched videos on how to do this, how to properly edit your videos, how to upload them right, you know. And I really wanted to learn. And I was trying to be a student of the game. So I came in obviously nervous and uh, palms were sweaty, as everyone would say. Uh, <laughs> right. But overall, I came in. I said, you can't come in with the mindset that you're not going to make it. Otherwise, you're going to fail. Mm-hmm. If you already believe you failed before you even came in the door, there's just no point. And so I came in very confident. Obviously, in the back of my head, there was that nervousness, but I came in strong and I wanted to succeed. And that's what I was going for. I love that. I, I love that confidence. And it's something as long as I've known you, you've always had, you know, you've always had that confidence, which is I think I think when you're in YouTube, it you need that, you know, you can't. You can't really be soft and and be in YouTube. Correct, very correct. And as someone, and, and this I'm not I'm not a soft person. I'm a very I've always said to myself I am. I'm, I'm erratic. You know, I, I have my times where I can be the softest, nicest guy in the world. I can be rational. I can be outright annoying. I can be brash, but I want to make sure that I check myself in all areas so I. You know, I can become a decent person, not a perfect person, not a bad person, just someone who you can say, hey, that guy's pretty cool. You mm-hmm. know? And, and I and I listen, I think you're pretty cool. I just want to well, lay that out there that. right now. I and, appreciate that. I mean, obviously, you have over 9000 people that think you're cool, which in reality, that's I, I'm sorry. I just I can't get over the fact that you're, you're already at over 9000 subs to me. That's just oh, I was so happy when I saw that. I was happy. But in my mind, I never, I never like, I never think I'm better than anybody. Yes, but even somebody who's below me, I don't think I'm ever better than them. Especially if I personally think they're better than me, myself. Mm. Um, and me, nine thousand, it's a lot to a lot of people, and I know it's a lot to a lot of people. So I, I'm not trying to undercut it, but I always, I'm that person who's like, okay, I got here. So what's the next step? You know, right? I'm that type of person, like. You made it here, but what's the next step? And I had that, and that, that's what taught me about from the old. That's what I learned from the old channel is that because I got, I got, I got caught up in it towards the end. You know, I got like, hey, I'm at four, I'm at four K. I, I wasn't cocky or anything, but I was getting excited and getting happy, mm-hmm. which there's nothing wrong with that. But right. I, I got a little caught up in it. I wasn't so concerned about the future, you know, on what's the next step. And now I'm at that point where I learned where. Yeah, I'm doing great, but I have to have a goal. My first goal, get back to where I was. Second goal, 5K. Next goal, 10K. I'm getting close to there. Where I go from there, 15K. I want to keep, you know, breaking down those barriers and breaking and getting to those goals that I want. Yeah, I mean, keep grinding, man. And that's that's another aspect that you need to have when you're starting YouTube. You know, you need to be constantly shooting higher. And you need to be wanting more. You need to be ambitious, you know, along with being tough. And um, I, I think you exhibit both those things, you know, very well. And and it's it's shown, especially since, I mean, you had this thing. You already had had built up this fan base. Uh, I think I think you said 4K, and mm-hmm. then and then you know your channel got terminated, and. I remember that happening because it either happened right before or right after mine got terminated. Um, yes. How did you bounce back from that? Because I mean, I, I'm there with you. I know how that feels. We were about, we were at about the same number of subs, you know, same 
it happened in the same way. Um, I know how I feel about it, but 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 how did you bounce back? Well, to explain that, it has to explain how I felt when it happened. And like I said, it, it wasn't that long ago. Like it was a few months ago, you know. Which mm-hmm. I guess that shows how I guess that shows. Yeah, how it would be like it'd be like June or July. June definitely yeah, was mine. Was yeah, it was June. June. June 24th, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what was going on at that time was I was working on my next cover song. You know, me and Sale was going to do some things, the Chiel channel. Um, and I just kept getting these swarm of, uh, of like, you know, well, before that, people were telling me, because I had heard that um, Yamcha got deleted. Um, I think Napa got, yeah, you, your channel got deleted. And I was yep. like, and... I was, I felt bad because at that time I didn't know you guys, but you guys are part of the community. I was like, oh God. And I didn't know how you mm-hmm. guys are going to bounce back from that, but you guys had such good friends. And the only thing I was worried about, the, what I was w- concerned about was getting monetized at the time because I, I couldn't worry about everybody else. But in the back of my mind, I was like, are they going to get me next? And I was wondering how you guys are going to bounce back. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that channels were going to get approved, that's all I was waiting for. I said, I'm just going to wait and be patient. And then I'm working on my next cover song, and my my Discord blows up. It's just a hundred, lots of people messaging me. I'm like, what's going? <laughs> I never had that many messages before, and they're just like, they're just saying, I'm sorry, abridged. Um, I'm sorry, this and that. I'm like, what? Sorry about what? What's going on? And that's when CL broke the news to me that my channel had been deleted. And I, you know, you're in disbelief. You don't want to believe. Oh, that. dude, I I remember exactly where I was. I was I was sitting on my couch. I had just got done, you know, uh, recording a reaction because uh, <clears throat> what I usually do is I record them and then I kind of take a break, you know, let my mind refresh. I come back, I edit them and do all that stuff. And so I was sitting on my couch relaxing and I just thought I would check, you know, my subscription feed, see if anything was happening. And, it, you know, you get that dreaded message saying, you know, you know, account unavailable, something like that. Yeah. And then you go to your email and you see the emails and you just go man you know that's it i couldn't i couldn't my heart skipped the beat yeah um and uh with me i i I went i went to my um youtube studios if nobody had youtube studios you know it it tracks everything you know your watch time your viewers all that stuff which i I recommend any youtuber who's a youtuber to use it it saves you a lot of time you don't have to use social blade for it um so i checked that and it was not there i went to my youtube thing it was like yeah, you had your channel due to yada 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 spam, which they never tell you about. No. Um, or gave you a reason. Um, your channel has been terminated, and I just I couldn't talk, and they were just everybody trying to check on me. I just said I didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, I you didn't just, want to talk you, about it. I just. Oh man, I, I feel. This. And I said it in the most nice, polite way as I could, because I because I know it, it's not their fault, and I know what they're trying to do, but I did not want to talk to anybody. I was mm. not in the mood for it. And, you know, they, you know, they were very respectful and I just sat there and, uh, I didn't cry or anything, but inside of what probably was, but, uh, I just didn't know what to do. Cause I, cause from my experience, I had put so much time and effort, like this was my hardest effort, but as a, as a, as a whole, I had put a lot of time and effort. I had over six, 700 video, no, no, over 700 videos, um, put into that all that combination of work was gone. It wasn't so much that I lost my subscribers because subscribers will come and go. Right. But the it's work the and work. time you put, it's the that work. you put into that mm-hmm, yep. was gone and people can't see that because I always wanted to say, this is where I started and then th- look where I am now. I always want to leave those videos as an example of anybody. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you're having a bad time. Go check out my cringy videos, you and, know? And, 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 and as and much now, as I as much as much I said earlier that I was like, yeah, don't, I, I'm glad that my, my videos are gone. Part of me you know, agrees with you that the fact that those really old videos that I made, you know, a year and a half ago when I was using like iMovie and I was trying to like strip stuff together and like, it was just like the most weird combination. And yeah, I wish I could look back on that too, you know? Cause I always looked at it in a lot of ways. It represents where you were in life. Um, and how young, you know, like I said, look at me in my feckless youth, like me at like uh, this age. And then how much you improved over time and i wanted that to serve to many anybody who wanted to be a youtuber was cautious about it like my friend is right now i want to say well look look at me i wasn't i didn't have nothing you know right. um and now i went to here and and now the though and i love what really what really helped was the overwhelming response the backlash you know afterwards you know because i didn't 
like I said, even though I was getting into my, I was almost believing how good I, how good I was getting in my growth. I never believed myself to be bigger than anybody. Never, mm-hmm. never have. And the overwhelming support that my friends gave me because that was, that was my biggest solace from that channel that I made a lot of friends and I didn't shy away from it. I said, if you want friends, you need to go out there and show them that you're worth something, make them laugh, do this, be yourself and make them think you're worth their time. And you know, CL, Bardock, Modern 21, I made a, a good amount of friends and they had my back. You know, I didn't know Mark at the time. I actually got to talk to him in between that time of making a new channel and, you know. Right, right. But they, you know, Lady Z, you know, she really went to the bat for me. Um, um, Goddess Cresselia, um, Koi, like I said, mm-hmm. Koi. Yeah. And like I said, uh, CL, those were like, and uh, Bardock as well. Uh, saying Mimi uh, and my fans <laughs> that was that was really surprising seeing my fans who because I would I would look around I would type in my name and then they would say where's the bridge go Cooch channel what yep. happened F you yep. YouTube and that really that's what really made me say I can't I can't walk away from this because I don't want to if I walk away from this right now then everything you put into that channel is gone and the people who you work so hard to entertain, you know, they, yeah, event, yeah, channels come and go and ultimately they can find something, but they don't want, it doesn't mean you have, it has to end. You decide when it ends, not you two. You have to decide if you want to end it. And I didn't want to end it there. Mm. No, that's so. exactly right. I mean, I, I, I had such a, it's like our, our experience are so similar that, it, that it's frightening. I mean, um, but yeah, I remember that. Cause I remember going on discord and thinking, you know what? Like, Nobody's going to know, you know, nobody's going to, there's, there's not going to be a big uproar. I'm just going to disappear. I'm going to fade away. And then like, I I was getting all these messages from people saying, Hey man, you know, we want to help. Hey man, I'm making a video. Hey man, I'm uploading a video telling YouTube that this is stupid. And I, I, exactly what you said. Um, it's that support that, that made me keep going as well as you. Indeed. Um, and that's why when I the first thing I did a couple times was I, I made sure to make a, an appreciation video and, and a remnants because the one thing I, I was so happy and I was really so happy I did this as I had, I had put all my content on a backup not on a backup channel but I put on, on a new channel called buzz top buzz um, it I, all of them didn't make it through but a good chunk a good a definitely good chunk of it made it and got passed and I would put links in my old videos like when I was talking about the remnants of a bridge Goku and I just told my story and I said you know if anybody if you're interested in seeing what I did so I still have a good chunk of those memories at least on another site it's not on YouTube but it's on another site I tried uploading them apparently you can't really upload videos from from top buzz and they're and if you do they're in low quality but they're still there at least right right and they exist they exist. They're not just gone forever. And I, I'm, I was so happy that I was coherent enough to at least do that. So at mm. least every, so it wasn't all in vain. And that also really helped as well. So now I'm back. I have to make this new channel and I have to make this work. And I said, I need to do, I didn't want to, obviously I didn't want to change anything too much, but I wanted to make it better. I got me a new mic, um, a blue snow, which was a good startup. It's still, I still use it to this day. Um, you know, I wanted to use more atrocity. I wanted to do a bit more things. Um, I wanted to get better backgrounds. I wanted to just fluff up the channel a bit, not so much change it, but improve upon it. And mm. I, and I felt that as bad as it was, it was a good life lesson. It's something my dad always told me as well, that when we were talking about this, it was something that I, I, I really think I got smart from because now I went in with nothing to lose. I said, what, what else are you going to take this channel from me too? Now I, I <laughs> I'll just make mm-hmm. another one. Mm-hmm. And I just kept grinding and growing. I, I didn't expect to grow up the fast way. Like in that day, I, I was already at 800. And the, and the same day I made my channel, I was already at 800 subscribers. And just a warm support from Koi, CL, just everybody who I'd become friends with genuinely. Like, That's I didn't insane. just. That's insane. That's insane. Like, because I always felt like if I'm going to form a partnership with you, I'll let you know up front that I want to work with you, but it's not just to have a working relationship. I want to be friends with you. Cause I felt the best chemistries are from your, are with your friends, mm-hmm. you know, 
I've always had good chemistry with people who I genuinely feel are my friends because we laugh, we talk about stuff. Even even if it's stuff we don't care about, we we uh, joke around with it. Uh, and they just they just was really good. And and when they were talking about it, you know, you know how you we were talking about fans who were um, pouring their hearts out on YouTube. Right. The comments that's what really helped too. The comments on my friends' channel when they talked about my channel. In the comments, like, oh, he got deleted. I was going to subscribe to him or I would subscribe to him on YouTube or lots of hashtag kill YouTube or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, Lord. But yeah, I had to bounce back from it. I just had to. So I came in with a new mindset and said, just keep grinding your butt off, but also improve yourself mm-hmm. while you're doing it. Don't lose yourself. Improve yourself. It's not the time to lose yourself into yep. this, you know? Yeah. So live streams, more a bit more reaction on a crappy computer, by the way, <laughs> which I'm using right now. But yeah. you're not crappy right now because you're working. So. Right, uh, right. You know, so it it just it just kind of sped up from there. Next thing I know, within that month, and that was my biggest achievement. And not only did I bounce back, I surpassed my original goal and hit 5K within that one month mm-hmm. period. Yeah. Which was which it took me to get that 4K. It took me three months, and I thought that was pretty fast. But then. I bounced back and I got to 5K within one month. And like I said, I thought part of that was from my, my worth ethnic, the overwhelming support, and my friends. Those combinations right there, I thought, is what helped make my this channel right here bigger than it ever was before. Right. No, I, I agree. And on a happier note, <laughs> moving from uh, from terminations and, and um, eliminated channels, uh, the second part of this this little talk, I want to get into the community. Um, and so I want to, I want to preface that by asking you, what do you think makes your channel abridged Goku? What makes you unique? Because there are so many character channels out there. There's a lot of Goku's out there. Mm-hmm. What, what makes you, you? I think what makes me, me is me. If I'm going to be honest with you, because when I see a lot of character channels, there, you know, you know that whole cliche is that you have to sound like the character to be the channel, which, to a certain extent, I think they're not wrong. But at the same time, it wouldn't be a character channel if they just sounded like the, the other character. You know, mm-hmm. at least from my opinion, you know, you can sound like the character all you want, but you have to have a different personality. I look at Boma Bunny; she sounds like Boma Bunny, but she's different. She's yeah. her own thing, you know. Prince Vegeta, yeah. Devil Artemis, they're all, they all can sound like the character, but they're different versions of that character, and that's what we love. If we wanted to see the original characters, we'll just watch the show. You know? Right. No, you're that's exactly what I, right. It's that that's creativity. Exactly, yeah, that's what I learned and when I took away from all those bigger channels was be something unique and different. And I wanted to take Goku originally. Originally, I wanted to take Goku and just make him even more wackier than mm-hmm. that of the a bridge version, because that's what I was taking. So I wasn't focused on Funimation Goku. I was focused on a bridge Goku. What can I do to be different but similar to that Goku? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I started, you know, he loves muffins, so I'll add that in. And that kind of blew up, you know. He's the Muffin King now. And yeah. then Lily just came in and just flipped everything, because my character wasn't supposed to be like, similar to Koi's character in that he's a man, ho, Koi's a slut. He was not supposed to be anywhere near that. He was actually supposed to be innocent that girls would flock to in a friendly manner, but then me and Lily played around with it, and then she did the whole man whole thing, and it kind of stuck. It just sort of stuck, right. and I started doing it with more people, and it's like... Well, there, there are so many things that, like, you don't plan for your characters to be, and I, I guess if I had an example, my, my best example would probably be uh, King Vegeta. Mm-hmm. I, oh, man, like a year ago, I was like you know what, I'm going to do the reaction as this dude. And I didn't think, I thought it would be a one-off thing. I actually expected people to say, oh, please don't do that again. That was so cringy. And now it's like, I would argue King Vegeta is probably the most popular thing on my channel. And, you know, the whole, you know, greetings, peasants, and, and all that stuff. <laughs> yep, it's, I like that. You, you, you just don't expect this stuff to happen. And... You know, your your channel just goes in a direction where you do not plan because, you know, this is what the subscribers want. This is what they like. And at the end of the day, you know, you work for the subscribers, you know, that that's mm-hmm. what you're doing it for. So, And, 
yeah, when it happened, it was like, okay, well, this is working. And <laughs> still to this day, you know, people want me to make a Discord. I don't want to make a Discord. I, it sounds like too much work. And yeah, and just people just kept egging me on to do it. And it was my own fans. Like, they just, they really wanted to be part of the community. But I also took it. I got, I got smart. And I said, you know what? Make it so you have a place where your fans could go. If anything, if anything, this is a place where your fans could go, have a good time, and... You know, have a, you know, make some more friends because that's because I, I, I thought about it with my old channel and I was like, I made friends on Discord, you know, right? That's how I did it. Yep. And if anything, I want to inspire other people who want to be a YouTube channel and stuff. And so I said, screw it. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a Muffin Kingdom. And I, and I did it. I had CL's help. I'm still, she still helped me out. That's why I made her the Muffin Queen on the, on the uh, Discord. Right, right. No, I love that. I love that role. Yeah. You know, Guys, for Celia, Koi, I just brought you in, mm -hmm. and I just, I just wanted this place to be a place where nerds or people who are similar to me, or even if they're not, they're welcome to come here and take the load off and just have fun. Because I didn't want to be too strict, you know. You know, I, I follow the rules and guidelines of Discord. As long as they follow those guidelines, I'm happy. You know, just right. don't come in. Just come in, have a good time, have a muffin. Don't be a spoiled muffin, <laughs> and you know. Just, just have fun with your friends, you know, get into talks. You know, I talk to my, and I think that's what, really, that's what, you know, when you said what separated me, I talked to a lot of people. Now, you know, when I live stream, I make sure I try to answer as many people as I possibly can. And that was the one thing they asked, what do you like about me the most? They said, you actually talk to us. You, you know, other big YouTubers, because they're so big, they can't talk or respond to the fans. And I thought that was just so sad. You know, it's not on them. They just got to that level. And that was yep. always my biggest fear is that I get too big. I can't answer a lot of people. But at least on Discord, I can at least try. Yeah. You know, I, have an, I have an opportunity to answer as many as I can. It, get, it, it gets overwhelming, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, definitely. Definitely. And I, I can only imagine how much, like, stuff you have to answer on the daily. I mean, it's – yeah, it's, it's got to be crazy for you. Which um, leads me to my next question. Uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about earlier how you started, you know, kind of in the Star Wars community, moved over to the DBZ community. Why did you, why, why have you chosen to be a part of this community specifically? Because I mean, the Dragon Ball Z community is awesome, but it also has its problems. Um, so, so why did you choose to, to join up and, and be a part of this thing? Well... And just to be honest, I like the Star Wars, the Star Wars community, and or any community for that matter, will always have bad eggs in them. There's just just no getting away around that. Um, and I wasn't really interested at the beginning because when I was watching YouTube, I didn't even know about there was a Dragon Ball community like when it first came out, or even 2014 or 15. I didn't even know about the community. I didn't find out about the community until like 2016 when I was really getting more into reaction videos. Well, I was already into them, but I was really getting into them. And I just kept seeing a lot of these YouTubers, uh, Prince Vegeta, a Boma Bunny, a Devil Artemis, a Lord Frieza, uh, Gur, and later on I saw CL. Uh, just all these channels, and they're really just interesting. I was like, these guys are really interesting. I'm doing the Star Wars channel at this time, and I'm just mesmerized by how well, even if it's like some of them didn't sound like the character, they were their own character, and that's what attracted me to, to that. I was attracted to how they portrayed themselves. Mm. And how they were just able to ha be a character because if you, you know it's one thing to sound like it, but when you're your own thing, and I find it interesting, I'm going to watch you. You know, like this is somebody actually I need to keep a close eye on. Uh, and from there, I was like, and since Dragon Ball Z was always my favorite anime, I, it wasn't really a no. It was almost like a no brainer. Like I gotta get part of this. You know, this is this is cool. And you know, I I, I used to do. Funimations, uh, Dragon Ball Z characters do impressions of them. I didn't think I was all that great. Then I did Team Four Star. I was like, some of these characters sounds like me. Like, you know, like Nappa. I, I tested with Nappa. It's it like whenever you know when he would do like a, a phrase like, um, <laughs> like "Hey, Vegeta, Vegeta." Yeah, I love you there, buddy. It's messing around with that. Decided, hey, you know, if they can do this, why can't I? You know, if you know, if they. And, and that was the thing. I was so humbled coming in because I didn't know how the world was going to perceive me but to make that transition from, you know, being twins of sanity to Star Wars. But at that time, I wasn't that big neither. I was like, I'm at the level where I can make that transition. It's not like going to be a big change. You mm -hmm. know, not that many people were watching me anyway. 
So if anything, maybe a rebranding was the right thing to do at that time. And right. obviously I made the right decision. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah, like choosing to join that community. Uh, I mean, obviously it's paid dividends. I mean, you, you've proven to be very successful. Um, you have a very big following, you know, you're working with some very big people. Um, so I, I have to ask as someone who is, you know, becoming more influential in the community, do you think that this whole character channel thing, is it moving in the right directions? You know, what are some of the improvements that we can make? Because we're not perfect. You know, there's still a lot of strife. There's still a lot of bitterness, you know, without getting into all of the specific drama. Mm -hmm. How do we, how do we improve? It's a good question, honestly. And I'll tell you this right now, to be 100% honest, I don't know if I'm necessarily the right guy to say. Like I said, everybody has an opinion, you know. Um, you know the old saying, everybody has a butthole and they all talk shit. You know, not to mm. excuse my grammar there. <laughs> of course, uh, of course. But, you know, and from from my opinion and how, I, and how I've seen the YouTube community, all I've ever wanted to do whenever I came in was just to do my own thing make friends and work with nice and work with people along the way. I have no beef with nobody. I've never have, and I'm not trying to have any beef with nobody. And how you can grow is honestly, if anything, I think you should just work on yourself as a person and say, look back on like, say if you had a past beef, maybe look back at it and look at it from the other person's perspective rather than your own. Cause that's the one thing I've always learned. And I've reflected on if I've ever had a fight with anybody you know, I would always get so much into my own emotions. I would just mm -hmm. say, you know, because I, mm -hmm. I think I'm right. Right. It's me. I'm right. That person's clearly wrong, but I never look at it from the other perspective. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I don't think anybody, I think anybody who gets to a beef never really does that. They right. never try to see the other person's perspective or side of things. And that's what I think should be improved upon more people to understand each other, which is hard to do. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of, it's really hard to do, especially when you think you're right and you have the right to think that you're right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's like, it's like you, it's like we were talking about before we, we started doing this interview, you know, every person that you meet, um, should get a fair shake, you know, things that you've heard about them before shouldn't come into play. Just meet them where they're at and judge them based on, you know, how they treat you. Um, mm -hmm. but I mean, it just seems in this community all the time, you know, people are being treated because somebody else told something about them or rumors got started or the gossip happened or, and, and that's sad. It's sad that those relationships get broken before they can even start. And that comes back to also the fans as well. You know, you, if you're going to, and even if you have beef with this person, don't ruin it for the people who watch you mm -hmm. because if, because they're going to pick sides, it's going to force them to pick a side and you don't want that. You want this community to come off as, you know, as good as it possibly can. It's not great, but at least make it as good as you possibly can because it sends a good impression, especially if you're bigger than any than somebody else because they're, they're going to be the guy they look to. You know, you're, you're going to be the guy they look up to or take inspiration from uh, how you do things. And, you know, I've never pictured myself as a role model, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if I have beef with somebody, I want it to stay between them. I don't want... You know, I'm not going to attack that channel. I'm not going to say anything bad about that channel. I'm just going to do me and focus on what I do. Even if you have beef with that person, let them be them and you do you. So at least you don't have to be cool with them. I'm not saying anybody has to be cool with anybody because you don't have to like anybody you don't want to like. You don't. Mm -hmm. You're a free person. Do whatever you want. But at least don't spread more hatred around. Don't add to it. You need to just... You know, do you know? Focus on your channel. Let them focus on theirs, and just have be cool. You know, everybody needs to just be cool. You don't have to like each other. You don't have to love each other, but at least be neighborly, if right. that sounds right. No, neighborly. That, that's you're exactly right. I mean, there are so many. It's unfortunate because there are so many YouTubers that used to work together when I first came in, and I won't bring up specific names, but I think, you know, you can take a couple guesses at who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, there were, there were these group of people that worked together. The content was there. It was popping. It was amazing. And all of this drama has happened. And, and I'm not saying, you know, that I don't still enjoy the content from those individual YouTubers. But I, I noticed when I went back and I looked at the view count, 
that they were most successful when they worked with one another. And it's sad that we don't have that as much. Um, you know, it was already kind of gone by the time I even got here. So I, I can't say that I ever was in like the golden age of YouTube where everyone was happy and worked together. And it's not like there wasn't drama back then too, but there's just, there doesn't seem to be that camaraderie, but I, I think there's, I think there's an up and coming group of YouTubers, you know, that are still small, you know, people like you that are coming up and they have a different outlook on things. That's just, you know, the facts of life. Everybody's going to have a different outlook no matter where you go in this world. And, uh, you know, like I don't have the answers to everything. I'm not God or anything. I just, I just, I'm just me and all I can ever really be is me. And I take everybody's, um, what they say. I don't take it in stride. But at the end of the day, I have to come to my own conclusions on things because that's what everybody else is going to do. I don't try to come, I don't try to, you know, make any prejudgments for anybody if I haven't had any experience. You know, I, I believe what people say, but at the end of the day, the only person I can ever really believe in is myself and see it for myself if and determine if it's true or not, you know, when, when it comes to judging somebody. Because you know, I've seen lots of people prejudge, you know, based on their actions. It's not like from a place of ignorance, but we don't know what that person goes through in their day to day lives. We don't know. You mm. just don't. You're not gonna know everything about this person. You only know what you see in front of you. Right. You know that, and that's for any YouTuber, not for anybody DBZ community. Any YouTuber, person, celebrity, you only see what you see, and that's what you're gonna base it off of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, well, I mean, that's. That's deep. I mean, that's that's some that's some critical advice that I think people need to need to heed. And I, I think that's there's a lesson there. You know, you don't have to be the biggest channel on the site to know what you're doing. You know, or to be successful, or to um, have it figured out. And it it seems to me that you have a lot of this figured out, which is which is crazy for you know you you've only been in this game in this specific community for. A short while you know compared to a lot of other youtubers so the speed at which you've you've kind of picked all of this up is is really impressive and in a lot of ways i just you know and that thing that just comes from me watching on my own like i didn't it's not like i just like i was like new to like seeing these guys i knew i learned from what they were doing i learned a lot from the people who were in this a lot you know way before i came in you know, learning that and really just taking whatever I can in and just trying to do the best I can possibly do. And just learning not to care what people think of you, you know? Right. That, when I did that singing, I was like, you know, if I, can, if I can do that, I can do this. And just don't care, you know, what people say. Just focus on trying to be the best you can be, be the best YouTuber you can possibly be. And uh, whatever drama comes your way, it's going to happen. You know, be ready for criticism, be ready for, because anybody, to anybody who's trying to do this, and I learned this actually from, from Alex Clark, you know, the Alex Clark channel, he's there in the cartoon community, because I wanted to get into that originally, but I'm not a right. good artist. <laughs> right. um, the one thing I really picked up from his channel was, um, be ready for criticism, because you're just going to have people that just flat out won't like you for whatever reason, whatever reason it is, and that's okay, mm -hmm. you know? You know, but look at how focus on the people who really enjoy what you do. I've always said to a channel, if you don't like the channel, you don't have to watch. Or even if you're a troll, you're devoting so much time to that channel. I feel honored that you're devoting all this time to my channel. I know. You can be doing awesome. something else. That's awesome. And you need to focus on the people who love your content because your content is not for everyone. My content is not for everyone. Your content is... Anybody who has content, it's going to be for your people, right. the people who you want. You don't, you're not supposed to appeal to everyone. You're supposed to appeal to your, your people, mm -hmm. you know, your community, your fans, how you want to pronounce people who watch your channel. Yeah. No, you're, that's you're, all I've ever said. You know, you're absolutely right. And this is, this is the perfect, perfect segue because we're going to do a couple of, a, a couple of quick questions before we go. And this is going to mm -hmm. be about you and uh, basically, you know, uh, some some questions that maybe some of your fans and may, maybe some of my fans want to know about you. Uh, so mm -hmm. just kind of a kind of a rapid fire round here. Where gotcha. do you want your YouTube channel to be in a year? 
I will, honestly, in a year, I want it to at least be at 50K if I can get it there. 50, I, I love that. I love how, like, you're shooting for the stars. And it's not unrealistic, but, like, you have those high goals. Have I, realistic goals, but do not uh, chase them off of a bridge to get them. Yep, yep, definitely, definitely. Okay, well, next question. Besides your YouTube channel, I, I mean, I know you, you devote a lot of time to this YouTube channel. You're on that grind. Okay, you're getting videos mm -hmm. out constantly. Mm -hmm. What do you like to do besides YouTube? I love to play video games, and I love anime. You know, watching anime. I love to write poetry. You know, story poems. I love to tell stories. Um, I love to wrestle. I love to act. You know, and lastly, I I I've really been getting into. I really love to badminton. Play badminton. That's really fun. Really, that's mm -hmm. cool. Used to be, I'm aggressive on badminton course, man. That's that's awesome because so many there there are a lot of people who think you know if if you're a YouTuber you just kind of sit in your you sit at your PC all day and you're editing or you're playing video games or kind of the regular stuff but um, you know we we live regular lives <laughs> you know we go out we we hang out with friends we have social lives we work um, yeah I actually said to my friend I hope I don't get recognized because you know they're like oh what are you doing here well I come to the same store you do sir it's not like we have a special YouTube store we have no you know, bills to pay we have more <laughs> we special, have lots of stuff we have to do special. yeah we go to YouTube Mart uh, oh yeah we, it's like it's like uh, it's like Costco except you know more exclusive mm -hmm. we just buy all our stuff in bulk because you know we don't leave our house for like months at a time so we need to stock up yeah, so we have a butler that does that for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for those, speaking of people wanting to meet you, um, for those of you who are fans out there of Abridged, um, I'm sure you guys want to meet him, talk to him, in some way interact with him. Abridged, how do they do that? What's the best way for them to do that? Because I know there are bad ways, because I've seen, I've seen people that, you know, they troll streams, they, they spam chats, you know, they're just asking all these questions. What's the good way for people to get in contact with you? The good way, honestly, I've always said this is, for one, don't ask for uh, shout outs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, oh, Lord. I'm pretty sure every guest that I will ever have on this will say that at some point. Don't ask for shout outs. Yeah. Um, honestly, I pro approach me the way I approach people and be yourself, man. Um, even if you're a bit overzealous, you know, and you, like, one thing, one fan who I didn't know anything about, they, they talked to me. They sent me a really endearing message about how I helped them and how much my channel meant to them. And they just, they just, I can tell they put a lot of thought into that message. That really grabbed me. And I love people who, who try their best. And I, and I know I can't get to everyone, but that one really stood out on how much I meant to that person. I said, I, how can I turn this away? You know, mm -hmm. like when they're trying that hard and I know the struggle, I know the grind and I, and I work so hard as well to become friends with as many people as I possibly can. And I think that's one of the best ways. I've always said this. Just be yourself. If, if you're a crazy person, that, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> like, and I'm, ta I'm not talking about weird because there's nothing yeah. wrong with being weird. No, there's I'm just, weird. We're all weird, you know. Um, we've all but, met the crazy. And it's mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. I mean, you, you know it when you see it. Um, but, but, yeah, be, be you and 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 – I don't say that's enough for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if and if I don't message you back or anything like that, you know, if I didn't get to it, don't give up, you know. I wouldn't say I'm like Gabriel Iglesias. If anybody ever saw me on the streets and like somehow knew who I was and they wanted to say hi, take a picture, don't hesitate to stop me a lot. If I'm not doing something important, do not hesitate. Do not hesitate to come up and talk to me and have mm -hmm. a fun conversation. Because if you can take the time out of your busy day to actually watch my videos, I can take a few minutes to say hi or smile or take a picture or whatever, if, if it ever comes to that. You know? mm -hmm. No, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So what as YouTubers and character channels, what is our most important duty to our fans? What do we owe them the most? The one thing I owe them the most, and, not, I'm, and I'm not sure if I can speak for every YouTuber, just mm -hmm. myself as a YouTuber, the one thing I owe my fans the most is to give them content that they know that they're, you know, like, like say, you know, because I have a lot of kids on my, who watch my content. And right. the one thing I was got excited about is coming home and watching something good. Like, oh, no, this is going to be good. He's on. He's, he's pumping a video out. 
give them something that's worth you know coming home to watch you know i want to mm-hmm. give them something when they watch it they felt satisfied that they watched this or this is why i'm subscribed to this guy or her you know right they're doing that and i think that's one of the most things as a content creator you have to create content mm-hmm. you know you don't want to you don't want to do lazy content you don't want to you know act like you didn't put much effort into it some people do some people don't and you get different you know statistics or outcomes i do whenever i make content i want to make sure i put my i put 100 i give it my all and it may not come out perfect but i made sure I, I did everything i could to make it as good as possible for you to enjoy you the viewer to enjoy because that's my job as a content creator right is give you something good to watch right and it's I've had it so many times where I, I recorded a reaction and I'm playing it back and I and I noticed this mistake or that mistake or something technical <laughs> yeah, like there. the audio and yep. I'm just thinking, you know what, it's fine, like, who cares? I just want to upload it and get it done. And then I think, you know what, I owe more to the people that watch. I need to give them the best things possible. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not – I don't make mistakes because I do, but – we you all, know, as we all do. You, yeah. you just want to, you know, don't just give them your first take, you know, do it oh, until, yeah, do it until you think it's worth watching, you know, because <laughs> if I'm not going to watch it, why would I expect someone else to watch it? You know, mm, you read my mind. That's, that's always went through my mind when <laughs> making a video Yeah, and uh, especially a cover song. Oh Lord, the level of how many I've been through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. And you know, with me, like when I was doing a video, there's sometimes I accidentally cut off the audio and I'm like, oh, why'd I do that? And, uh, or, or I, I hear a little bit of background. I was like, I really should have, uh, mm-hmm. scrubbed that. <laughs> yeah. But then there are times yeah. you shouldn't, you should not also, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to try, you know, I always said there's nothing wrong with trying to be a perfectionist or trying to just improve yourself, but do not, and I mean that, do not spend too much time on everything because at the end of the day, if you spend too much time, you're going to burn yourself out and it's going to be worse than what you thought or how it first looked in yeah. the beginning because yeah. I've done that where I thought, I can make this better and then I just spend so much time and it's been hours and hours. I haven't eaten, showered or something like that. Like It's just, dude, you can't make it any more better. You just, you yeah, know, you don't sometimes have you just gotta let it go. It's just not that great. You, yeah, just, you gotta just gotta let gotta it go. Accept it how it is, and I'm sure they'll love it. You know, I'm sure they'll, or if they don't love it, you ju- just promise, just promise yourself you'll do better. You know, mm. don't be sorry, be better. Right, right. No, you're, you're exactly right. And uh, that brings us to our last question as we approach. We're at, we're almost at the 60 minute mark. So this is gonna be, this has been, this has been an awesome hour. I've enjoyed every single second of it. Um, I'm almost sad that I'm at my last question, but here we go. Um, what mm-hmm. is your advice? Because there are so many people out there, especially young people. You know, mm-hmm. maybe they're in a in a tough situation. Maybe they don't have the equipment. Maybe they don't have the money. What is your advice to all those people that want to be YouTubers and they want to be like they you know they watch a bridged Goku and they say I want to be like that guy. What advice do you have for those for those people? You know, you know, coming from a place where you know I've been there, and I can honestly say I've been there. I come from that just not too long ago. The one thing I, that always got in my way was that fear of n- people not going to like me, or that fear that I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to be good as this guy. And my biggest advice is that's what's going to keep the only person that really stops you from doing youtube is you and your yourself that's really the only thing that's stopping there's nothing else getting in your way as far as you know wanting to make a video if you if you have like even a phone you know Mm -hmm. because i i remember when i had a phone and uh just did some stuff there made cover songs on the phone and it's in the crappy audio that it had Mm -hmm. um that was my biggest obstacle because the fear of being camera shy not thinking I'm any good or be or any as good as the people who I looked up to, what kept me down for years. And I would just stay in the comments and type my opinion, but I'd never really acted like right, I could do right. this, you know? And I always felt that was the number one thing that kept me away for so long when I could have done this years ago. Because looking back, that was always, that's, you know how you say life, you don't have regret. I think you can have a few regrets in life. Oh, yeah. Be fine. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. And my biggest regret was not jumping in six years ago when I knew when I was when I was doing this six years ago. Right. And, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Just, just was so shy, couldn't do it, and oh, uh, just just that level of fear. Like there was a time I almost did it. You know, like two like two years after that, I almost did it, but mm-hmm. I still just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I and that's my number one advice for you: do not be afraid. You know, you know, you don't be afraid to fail. You get knocked down. You get back up. I can quote Rocky. It's not how hard you can get hit. It's how hard you can keep getting hit and keep going. You know, if you mm-hmm. get knocked down, you get back up and you keep going. And yeah, that's my biggest advice for you. And don't worry about audio equipment. That'll come and go. You know, and you know, spend. You know, if you want to spend more time, develop your craft. You know, develop yourself and your channel, and it'll come to you. If you felt this is worth your time and you want to invest money into it, do it. If you don't feel it, and you're just not vibing to it. And if you think it's not for you, that's fine. You're never going to know until you try. Mm. Well, that's, I mean, I don't think, I don't think we can, we can leave on a better piece of advice than that. So a bridge Goku, my man, my friend, um, thank you so much for being here. This has been, this has been awesome. This has been such an enlightening review, not a review, an interview, um, yeah, it's just been great. Thank you so much for being here. And I and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Hey, it's been it's been my pleasure. And uh hopefully we can have you back sometime. Anytime, dude. I'm always here. Whether I'm not whether I'm grinding on YouTube or just chatting up in live streams. Anytime. Sweet, sweet. Well, I look forward to it. But until then, um can you give us our outro, sir? Yes, sir. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and like I said, go subscribe to this guy, Napa the Saiyan Elite, and you bully a bridge Goku. Thank you for watching, and may you all have a very nice day, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye, guys. Bye!